In this video, we'll review basic brain anatomy for patients and their families who experience either stroke, brain damage, or brain tumors. It's much easier to understand diagnosis, signs, and symptoms, as well as treatment for these diseases if you first have at least a basic understanding of brain anatomy. In this image, we're looking at a side view of the brain, with the front on the left side of the screen and the back of the brain on the right side of the screen. The largest and uppermost part of the brain is called the cerebral cortex. The most important functions of the cerebral cortex are sensory processing, sense of smell, language and communication, and learning and memory. The cerebral cortex is split into two hemispheres, on the right and the left. The lower back part of the brain is called the cerebellum, and it is involved with motor skills such as balance and coordination. Patients with problems affecting the cerebellum often complain of recent onset stumbling, difficulty with balance or coordination, which may affect either handwriting or feeding themselves. The brain stem at the bottom of the brain is responsible for regulating automatic functions of the body, like heart rate and breathing. Because this area is responsible for such vital functions, and the fact that it's so difficult to reach, problems in this area are very difficult to treat because the risk of injury is high. The cerebral cortex is split up into four different lobes. The frontal lobe is responsible for most aspects of your personality, including problem solving, memory, language, judgment, and even sexual behavior, as well as emotional expression. Patients with problems in this part of the brain are often found by family to start behaving differently or to have new characteristics that are different from their known personality in the past. The frontal lobe is also responsible for motor function, and injury to that area can lead to seizure or weakness or even paralysis. The parietal lobe is located behind the frontal lobe. This area is responsible for receiving and processing sensory information about things like light touch, sense of temperature, as well as pressure and pain. Patients with problems in this area can experience things like numbness or inability to sense hot objects. The occipital lobe is located in the back of the brain and is responsible for visual processing. Patients with either damage to this part of the brain or a brain tumor may experience symptoms like blindness or blind spots as well as visual distortion or visual inattention, which is an inability to keep attention on an object. The temporal lobe is just where you would think it is, sitting just behind the temple and the ear. It is mostly responsible for speech processing and memory. Patients with an injury in this area can experience garbled speech or word finding difficulty, as well as problems with memory. If you switch from a side view to a front on facing view of the brain, you can see that the brain is perfectly symmetrical with equal right and left sides. Nerves that arise from the right side of the brain actually cross over and affect actions and sensory information from the left side of the body, and vice versa. Nerves that arise on the left side of the brain cross over and affect information coming and going from the right side of the body. So when we see a patient who has neurologic findings affecting only one side of the body, like weakness, numbness, or tingling, we go and scan the brain to look for a lesion, an injury, or a brain tumor on the opposite side of the brain. This is not medical advice. Talk to your doctor before making any medical decisions.